Mystery civilization in Antarctica vanishes 11,000 years ago. How's that for a headline? Rex Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? Beautiful day out here in San Antonio. The Coming Ice Age, this is an article that was published Harper's Magazine in 1958. Major earth changes and cataclysms are on the horizon, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that exciting? Well, what I think is even more exciting is this article from 60 years ago, literally. It talks about the uh, ice caps melting in Antarctica. It describes previous cataclysms and the research that they did to capture the evidence of these previous cataclysms. And you really need to read the eight-page article. Now, I'm going to give you some excerpts, but once again, what I find fascinating more than anything is how incredibly accurate the information that was presented 60 years ago is unveiling itself in front of us on a daily basis. Now, this is Bryce Canyon out in Utah, and I shared with you a place out there called Fantasy Canyon, which looks like just the most bizarre sets of rock figurations and who knows what else it is. You know, it looks like fossils of giant bones almost. The cataclysms, these ice ages, these pole shifts are very, very real. And in Utah and these places that you see these rock formations, there were enormous lakes at one time there, enormous ice caps, glaciers. And they're saying that within the next 50 years, North America and Europe could be covered, much of the continents covered in giant glaciers. So welcome to the new New World Order. Maybe that explains a little bit better the stratospheric aerosol injections, the geoengineering that's being done. And also the Adam and Eve story by Chan Thomas. Good luck finding an actual physical copy. And if you can, it's going to cost you about a thousand bucks. I saw one that was used for 700 or $657 or something like that. That's a pretty good deal right now for one of these things. And I was fortunate enough to get this for geez, less than 20 bucks. So the universe was obviously talking to me. The universe wanted me to have this so I could share it with you. And you can pick up the sanitized version via CIA.gov. They've got the, the sanitized versions that you can pick up. You can download them, JP, uh, JPEG, etc. Well, I think it's J or PDF, PDF format. Well, this describes in this book, it describes how every X amount of years, it doesn't give a specific time frame, but there is a, you could call it a reset on the planet. There's some gray matter that releases from the center part of the earth, from the core of the earth. That causes like a nuclear, it acts like a nuclear explosion inside of the earth, causing tectonic plates to move, causing enormous mountains to uh, like literally form in a very short amount of time. We're talking hours, these giant mountains popping out of the ground. Tidal waves of unprecedented proportions. Describing a tidal wave that goes from the west coast to the east coast up to 10,000 feet in height, starting on the west coast. And then after the fact, after virtually everything is flooded, except for the extremely high peaks, there's going to be areas where lava is going to come out from the ground. We're talking 2012 style. There's a good chance the film 2012, they got that information from this book and used it to make that film. Places like Pikes Peak and other extremely high areas, you're going to have a much better chance surviving a cataclysm like this. That also after, the this is according to Chan Thomas, and you can look at his credentials, you can look at the books and the essays that he's put together. This is more of an essay than a book, and he describes information that goes back hundreds of thousands of years. He describes the... Uh, ancient Genesis stories of the Nagas, which are in a completely different language form. So very intelligent. And this, the reason I'm showing you this right here is because a lot of this information, in my opinion, correlates with the information via the coming ice age, a true scientific detective story that was written by Betty Fryden back in 1958. 
And you should become a, a member at Harper's Magazine just for this one article. I mean, it's that good. So read the article. You can read the article for, for free on their website, eight pages. And there's one part. I want to read to you a couple parts out of that. Over the past million years, there have been numerous ice ages, pole shifts, major climatic earth changes. The last time was 11,000 years ago. Those were notes that I wrote from the information in here. This is a quote from the article. One day, a colleague of Don's happened to remark over coffee that he had overheard an anthropologist in the facility room talking about some traces that had just been discovered of an ancient civilization around the Arctic. Ancient civilization around the Arctic. And guess what? About 11,000 years ago, it disappears. The civilization. That was the end of the last ice age according to the data presented in this article. Here's another quote. For once you accept the radical idea that the Arctic was a warm open ocean at the time of the great continental glaciers. You can reconstruct a completely different weather pattern from the ones we know today, from the one we know today. As we worked it out, we could see a startling chain of cause and effect between the oceans and the glaciers themselves. We could see how the oceans would work as an actual thermostat to keep the Earth alternating between glacial ice ages and interglacial periods such as today. And suddenly, we had the startling hunch that the Arctic Ocean was open during the Ice Age, and that it froze over only 11,000 years ago. It was this freezing over of the Arctic Ocean which so suddenly warmed the Atlantic and ended the Ice Age. Hmm, interesting. Then it goes on to talk about how sea levels were lowered between 300 and 400 feet at the peak of the last ice age. Then it goes on to talk about cliffs and evidence of this ice age from cliffs above the dry Great Basin of Nevada and Utah. Several thousand feet above the basin are rock niches worn by the waves of glacial lakes lakes created from the great rains that fell south of the Ice Age snows. Then below the caves, worn by those caves, or worn by those waves, Nanu Nanu, they were inhabited by man, the famous Fishbone Cave, which is at the dry Winnemucca Lake in western Nevada, and the Danger Cave above Glacial Lake in Bonneville in Utah. So there's evidence showing how people moved into the caves not long after the lake suddenly dropped to expose them. Remains were found on the nets, baskets they used to catch fish that are now vanished glacial lakes. They did radio, uh, radiocarbon testing, and I know that there's a lot of controversy with the radiocarbon testing, although I think that if you're looking at materials, and I think it's a good form of testing regardless if you're looking at stuff that's less than 20,000 years old versus something that's maybe 200 million years old, I think it's going to be more accurate also. So about 11,000 years ago, radiocarbon dating shows men living in those caves brought above the water when the great glacial rains and snows stopped approximately 11,000 years ago. So this is describing how the sudden changes that Ewing and Don, these two scientists and geologists, brilliant minds, these two say that also confirms, this information is confirming the Ice Age and how it stopped 11,000 years ago. Then you can look at the Deagle reports showing how many of the Western nations are going to have a huge drop in population by 2025. I heard they just updated that, and the numbers have risen since the last time I looked, which is good, because at one point, and this was several years ago, it was at like 60 million. The population in, North, the, population in the United States is about 60 million in the future, and they were projecting that at approximately 2025. Now, they're also projecting a lot of NATO nations with smaller populations, and countries such as Russia stayed about the same. China went up a little bit. India went up a little bit. 
Middle Eastern nations as well stayed about the same or populations moved up. For places like Germany, Canada, the U.S., populations dropped substantially. I'm going to have to check their updates on that Deagle report. I'm sure you've heard of it. And just because they say it doesn't mean it's the case, but they're a very strong think tank. And it's interesting to look at the data presented from other forms of information and communication. So I just, I'm just absolutely blown away that somebody left this article, and I want to thank the person that left this link and this information in the comment section. You know, I, I do shows oftentimes poking fun of the trolls for just the ridiculous comments that they leave, but for every ridiculous comment, there's 10 amazing comments. And every once in a while, you'll find a comment that will lead you on a path of new discoveries such as this one, which many of us have heard before about the, the coming ice age and the global warming leading to the ice age and them trying to block the sun to, you know, stop the weather from changing enough to where it's going to cause these giant ice caps to melt and the, the oceans to rise on the coastal cities to where people are going to have to move, etc. Yes, we've all heard that before, but to actually find the article from 60 years ago with such great accuracy and then also correlating with the Adam and Eve uh, essay here by Chan Thomas, the description of how there are these earth changes and these pole shifts. Another thing that I want to go over with you that is fascinating here, and before I do, I just want to take a, a quick moment to thank our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, you should check out virtualshield.com slash leak project. They're offering a 20% discount right now. If you want to keep your information safe and to yourself and private, if you want to keep your family's information safe and private when you surf the web, well, check out virtualshield.com slash leak project. Less than five bucks a month to keep your information safe and anonymous. Also, they have other opportunities for you. If you want to turn off the webcam or the microphone from possible voiring ears and eyes, you can do that also. They're even going to give you 30 days of free usage. Use the program for 30 days for free. And then after, if you decide to keep it, it's less than 5 bucks a month. VirtualShield.com slash Leak Project. Okay, now let's go back to this article here. Harper's The Coming Ice Age. Ewing and Don, Brilliant Minds. Here's another quote. We know that during the past million years, the world has swung back and forth between ice ages and weather like today's. Ewing and Don told me, before then, the whole earth was much warmer. There were no zones of extreme heat or cold. Palms and magnolias grew in Greenland and coral around Iceland. Subtropical plants thrived within 11 degrees of the North Pole. Why didn't the Arctic Ocean Glacier thermostat work then? What suddenly turned it on one million years ago. So they're like, well, what happened? You know, what, what made the earth change so quick a million years ago? The answer, they believe, is chat until a million years ago. The North Pole was not in that landlocked Arctic Ocean at all, but in the middle of the open Pacific, where there was no land on which snow and ice could accumulate and ocean currents dissipated the cold. So talking about wandering poles, then there's recently discovered magnetic evidence leading to the geological interference that when the whole Earth can shift its surface crust, and this is, this is where it's also talked about here in the Chan Thomas story. This is spooky and exciting at the same time, especially if you're in Pike's Peak when it happens. <laughs> and you've got yourself a nice, beautiful bunker and airplanes and helicopters and spaceships and jetpacks. I'm sure most of you have those, right? I'm still working on that. So the, as the Earth's crustal zone slides over the interior... Different points on the surface can be at the North or South Pole. Such a shift in the Earth's crust is now believed to have taken place before. The first time, about a million years ago, before then, the magnetic record shows the North Pole in the middle of the Pacific and the South Pole in the open Southern Atlantic. Now, you remember several years ago when airplanes were having to, or airports were having to change their flight paths because of the, the airplane's GPS wasn't tracking the way that it was supposed to because of the geomagnetic shifts. It's moving right now, and it's just shifting at a, at a slower pace than what some might expect. So there was an abrupt shift in the Earth's crust that carried the North Pole into a landlocked, a virtually landlocked Arctic, and the South Pole into the Antarctic continent, where the polar cold could not be dissipated by free ocean currents. So that started the climate as we know it today, according to this article. So 
So they're saying that this is just another interglacial stage. And that here's another interesting point. A number of scientists have tried to disprove their theory. So far, they have been unsuccessful. And then they go on to say, and this is 60 years ago, folks, the ocean's already warm enough to melt the Arctic ice sheet. Ewing and Don told me, for some time it has remained at the highest temperature ever reached in four previous interglacial stages. As the climate becomes warmer, more of the glacial melt water pours into the sea, then the Atlantic has already risen 300 feet since the glaciers melted at the last ice age. Up 25 years ago, the U.S. geodetic surveys indicated that the sea levels were rising six inches a century. In the past 25 years, that rate has increased two feet a century. That's 60 years ago. How, how, what's it doing now? So more and more warm water is going to pour over into the Norway-Greenland sill. The sea levels will continue to rise. There's been an observed absolute warming of the Arctic Ocean. Russian scientists, Scandinavian scientists, American scientists, German scientists, all over the world, folks. There was an international conference in 58 of March saying that the Arctic ice covers an area of 12% smaller than it did 15 years ago, 40% thinner. And then, here's, here's another quote. This is where I'm thinking of geoengineering and stratospheric aerosol injections. It's a quote. The rate at which our weather has been warming in recent years could be temporarily slowed down. They told me. Oh, they told you that? How, did, how are they going to slow it down? How did they tell you they were going to do that? That's interesting. We don't know the exact rate at which the sea is now rising. We know that long-term worldwide evidence via International Geophysical Year may give us to assess accurately the changes that seem to be taking place in the ocean and ice. Now, also, let's go back a few years ago when that article came out and said the Earth had a little bit of a slowdown for a very short period of time and that there was going to be consequences of major earthquakes as a side effect several years down the road. I think we're seeing those changes right now. There are cracks in the Earth that are opening up all around the world. Just the other day in Mexico City, southeast Mexico City, a 400-meter crack opened up in a field. Then there was another one recently. I can't remember where this was at. I'm going to have to read through the comments section. I'm sure someone will leave this. The Kilauea volcano is definitely giving us a, a precursor of volcanic activity that hopefully will not, we will not see more of with the Ring of Fire. They recently discovered 91 volcanoes, supposedly recently. I mean, they probably, it's probably recent. 91 volcanoes. I mean, they're publicly admitting it anyway, and this is a great article. 91 new volcanoes were discovered in the Arctic. Or I'm sorry, in Antarctica. In and around Antarctica, to be more precise. Isn't this exciting? So that might explain why some of these ice sheets are melting from the inside out. And then you can speculate the possibility of there being a binary star on the horizon. And then you could ask yourself, is that why they spray certain days because it's more visible based upon the orbits? And then if that's the case, you know they spray specific days, so if you've got a nice telescope, you're still not going to be able to see it because the skies are covered. Is that why they're, you know, launching massive satellites with infrared systems? What about that telescope in Arizona that many people have said have connections with the Vatican and what they named it for, you know, being and, and the actual system that it uses to pick up on light signals that we don't see with our physical eyes. But if you've got two one thing that I read recently, which makes great sense, a binary system, you've got two stars that have different orbits, and they're going to fry the Earth when they're at the closest point, and then when they're furthest away, you know, obviously you've got less, sun. it's just, it gets different extremes, major extremes, and maybe the world's kind of getting prepared for that. I think that there's a whole bunch of variables that they're not letting us know about in public 
exposure. I think it's like you, you got to find these things yourself by reading through the white papers, and then you might find a good conspiracy that has a whole bunch of just BS, but the, the underlying theme about what it brings to the table could have some accurate points to it. For example, when you hear things like they're spraying the atmosphere around the world with these stratospheric aerosol injections to attempt to keep the, the temperatures as minimal as possible to offset this ice age with technology. And you hear about that and you think that's just a complete conspiracy. Go back and read an article 60 years ago that says, oh yeah, we can slow it down a little bit. They don't say how. We can temporarily slow it, slow it down a little bit. Then the article from 2013, I think it was in Norway, where they said they're gonna, the whole world's going to be an experiment. The whole world's going to be the, uh, the lab, and you're going to be the lab rats, basically is what they say, because they've never done anything like this before by you know, attempting to cool the planet so the ice caps don't melt, causing huge rises in seawater on the coasts. And then if the temperatures keep rising in the ocean, it's like the cause and effect. Extreme weather, thousands of years of ice, so the earth can heal itself. Hmm. Wow, it's pretty exciting, isn't it? What are your thoughts on this, ladies and gentlemen? Hope you're having a fantastic day once again. You know, this is not intended to... This is, this is a good thing. Knowledge is, is power. So if we can learn how to use this to everybody's benefit instead of, you know, just going up, you know, curling up in a corner and saying, I give up, it can be really exciting. I mean, we can take these energies that the earth is producing and find ways to, you know, shift it. Like Steven Seagal style. Was it uh, Akita? Akito. Akito, where like you use the person's, or judo, somebody's coming after you that weighs 300 pounds, say you only weigh, you know, buck 50, they come after you, you find a way to use their weight against them. Same thing with the earth. We can, we can use the earth's energies and do amazing things. I mean, maybe we could take all this energy of this pole shift, these geomagnetic shifts, and instead of spraying aluminum in the atmosphere, maybe you spray some type of oxygen creating organic compounds in there, and then find ways to work with the planet, not against the planet. It's like we're in this conquering mindset, or we're, we're not necessarily, but the, this, the MFers, the money funders, are in this conquering mindset. Why not just work together? Why, why do you have to conquer the earth? Why not just work with it? She loves you. Why not love her back, right? And on that note, be excellent to each other. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my rant. Can't wait to hear your comments. Leakproject.com. Become a premium member today. Get access to exclusive content. Your support helps Leak Project grow. Um, I have some new MK1 caps coming up. These are going to be here in about a month. And they're handmade in the United Kingdom right now. They've got EMF liners inside of them. So if you want to... You see, this is a liner right here. These ones have the liners actually built in, and they will help shield EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, up to 30 gigahertz. That's in the 5G range, the fifth generation communications range that a lot of people are concerned about because they use millimeter wave technologies, microwave technologies. Well, this has that, that liner actually embedded in it. So it's, it's sewn in it. The, I've got a couple of the MK1s left. Got a, I've, I've literally got less than 10 of these left. So these ones are just the full silver here. They've got the liners that will come in and out. These are limited to 33. If you want one of these, send me an email, leakproject at gmail.com. These are being auctioned off. And if you want to get one of the MK2s, the Mark IIs that are going to be here in about a month that have the liners built into them, that have the yin-yang bill, that bill will actually, if you turn the, the lights off, it's, it's still bright. It's really cool. So those will be, uh, there will be a set price on those. But if you want to get in on one of these really limited Tinfoil caps. Everybody's got to have a tinfoil cap, right? Especially if you're a conspiracy theorist. So that way you can say, oh yeah, I've got my tinfoil hat. Where's yours? And mine helps block 5G, buddy. I know you like to sleep next to your router and use your phone three hours a day and just talk to it right next to your head because you're just so smart and I'm the conspiracy theorist, right? Don't you love that? All right. Be the change you want to see.